Um, you're obviously new new to the offense, not like some of these other guys. Um, after getting into it now for a few weeks, what do you like about it? What what makes you excited to play it as a running back? Uh, when I the portal, it was like you know the no brainer for me. Um, I came here and I was like, once I, once the offense was opened up to me, I was like, this is going to be an opportunity for me to really showcase what I can really do. Um, I played a receiver in high school. Um, my coach Shannon offered me at JMU as a receiver. Um, and then I ended up changing and played running back at Wake Forest. Um, so when I saw the offense, I was like, man, this is really going to be an opportunity for me. But also had so much experience from playing four or five years on a power five level, um, going against the best of the best. And, you know, to be in the system, being as part of Bloomington, I was like, man, this is, this is the best feeling ever. So, yeah. We'll go Mason and Jack. Yeah, Justin, I, th I think you were the first commit to – commit to Kurt Signetti in the, in the new staff here once you entered the transfer portal. Just kind of how expedited was that process for you? You mentioned kind of a lot of the stuff that made the fit right for you, but kind of how quick did that process develop from going into the portal versus choosing Indiana? Man, it was really just about faith for me. Like, just taking that step, like, Signetti, I saw how passionate he was. And it wasn't many guys, there was guys in the portal all over Bloomington, but, you know, I was just like, man, this guy's passionate, and that's what I want to be a part of. I want to be a part of people who, you know, when all else fails, they know, okay, you know what, we put our mind to it, it doesn't matter what the record was before, we can change it around. So that was it for me. And when I met with him in that meeting room, the mom and dad, they didn't know what I was going to say. They didn't know if I was going to say, Coach, you got to kick rocks or what. And I just completely just was like, Coach, like, I'm with, the, I'm with the, the process and I'm with the transformation that you're trying to do here. So um, the quick turnaround was, you know, I got right in there. I, I think I got here like on the 27th. You no, know, everybody else got here like a week and a half later. So I came in early, brought my beautiful fiance, and I had a good old time. So, yeah. <laughs> you have Jack on your left and then Seth. Yeah, I think you're one of several running backs that Indiana added th this year. Do you kind of like that aspect of competition where, you know, you guys have, you know, a, a group of guys that could all kind of contribute and, and things like that? Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, just like I said, where I'm coming from, I'm coming from, uh, you know, Wake Forest, we got a guy coming in from Michigan, and, you know, just how much attention he brought, just kind of like, you know, I'm the type of person that rises to those occasions to, to really see that more so as it elevates the team and not, you know, how it's like I got to slide away from it, you know what I'm saying? So for me, it was just like, it's a great opportunity for me to go out there every day and just go get it. Um, and I've always had that go get it mentality. So, you know, every time I go to practice, it's like, yo, Every rep I'm in there, I gotta go get it because there's other people behind me that are trying to do the same thing, and other people that you know want what I have or, or whatever it may look like. So, Seth and then Zion, you talked about Coach Sanham recruiting you at JMU. Just what was your relationship like with him, and how helpful has it been to have that existing relationship coming in here? It was cool. Uh, he used to come to my high school, uh, you know, kick it, laugh, joke. You know, I didn't, I didn't have a pleasure to meet Coach Miller yet, but you know, Coach Sanham, we kind of built that connection. So when I hit the portal, it was like, man, like. It almost felt like family, you know. I wasn't going nowhere, you know, where it was new. It was brand new for me. It was like, man, I know these guys before. Um, they believed in me when nobody else did. And, you know, when I hit the portal and I came here, I was like, man, this is going to be a great opportunity. And even still, to this day, like, when I walk off the sideline, Coach Shanahan still talks to me like, hey, make sure you keep pushing. Make sure you're doing things right, you know. Even though he's not, you know, my coach anymore or wasn't, wasn't supposed to be my coach, you know, I still I respect him. I love what he, what he stands for. So. Zion on your left, and Mike, you talked about just the, the passion and the energy of the coaching staff and how that really stood out to you. What about that, like, inspires you and, and gets you going? Man, it's like every day I think about being resilient, like, detailed, and dominant. Like, that's the only three words every single time we wake up. And, like, they've installed that over and over and over again. And it's hard. It's tough. I ain't gonna lie, it is tough. Your back gets the wall every single day. But I, I feel like that breeds success. That breeds success just because you know that if you slack it, they're going to let you know. Um, if you're not doing what you're supposed to, they're going to let you know. If you are doing right, they're going to let you know as well. So it's a great balance. Um, I think the coaches are really trying to breed success. They're trying to breed being be able to be dominant in our, in our minds as well. So every single time I go out there, I'm like, man, like, I got to be dominant because that's what they're preaching. And, you know, that's who I am. So, you know, it works out for me. Mike and then Pete. Yeah, do you have an idea of what their vision for the running back room looks like in terms of like this fall, like you know how you guys are going to be used? Do you feel like it's going to be kind of riding the hot hand, or do you think you guys are going to have kind of specialized roles? Like, can you kind of figure out what that vision looks like? Oh, uh, I, I think man, we just have a great group of core guys, man. Like we got guys who can do a lot of different things. 
um, whether it's catching the ball, pass blocking, you know, running the football, making guys miss. Um, there's a variety of things that we can do out that backfield, and I'm excited to see, you know, how we can be able to translate that on the games. You know, I'm excited. To, I played Wisconsin in 2020, so it's it's good to be able to play back in the Big Ten and play all these different teams. So I think it's going to be really really fun to watch, and you know, I'm excited. So. Repeat third row on your left. Just, um, Justin, if you can describe maybe your running back style a little bit, your running style, and it seems like you have a knack for scoring touchdowns. So talk a little about that. Okay. Uh, you know, I would say my, my style, I'm a downhill runner, um, but I, I, I have mastered to make guys miss. Um, I've taken upon my, myself to really work on that on off season, a long time, wherever it is, to make guys miss. Um, and even, you know, when I'm swinging out the back and I'm one more with a linebacker, I know, okay, I play receiver, so if a DB can't check me, you definitely can't check me, you know what I'm saying? So just having that mentality every single time I'm out there, and I ain't gonna win them all. I ain't, I ain't Jesus, there's only one perfect man. But, you know, I had a mindset like, hey, every single time I get the opportunity, I'm gonna wanna take advantage of that. So that's what I would say about that. Um, what was your second question? And you seem to have a knack for scoring touchdowns. Oh, uh, a little something, man. I just want I just want to have the team win, man. That's, that's all, I mean, every single time I'm in there, um, one of my favorite games was at Wake Forest. We played Louisville, and it was like two minutes left in the game, and I was a sophomore. You know, I was a sophomore, and the only thing that was going through my mind is we got to win. Not I got to score, I got to do this, I want people to see me. I was like, no, we got to win. We got to do whatever we can do to get this ball in the end zone because ultimately we want to be able to embrace what we worked hard for for all those weeks before. So, yeah. We'll go to Daniel on your right, and then Zach G. Yeah, Justice. I, um, when you arrived here to where this locker room is at now, where have you kind of seen the most, I guess, um, like the, the progress internally from the voice, the impact of um, really the whole influx that we've kind of had here? Um, I think it's, it's, it's pretty neat because we have so many transfers. So pretty much everybody's trying to get a feel for each other. But also, too, we're, we're getting this message pushed out from Coach Nettie and all these coaches. Um, so it's really just about just relating that message towards each other and kind of like having guys come along. Um, I don't think none of the guys have turned anybody down. Like, man, you're not doing what you're supposed to. But I think there's a level of, you know, telling everybody, hey, let's, let's go, man. Let's go do this because ultimately everybody wants to win. You know, we're, we're desperate for wins here. We're very desperate for wins. And you can feel it when we're in the locker room. Um, we can completely feel it. And I know that, you know, the fans were desperate for wins too. So I just think, you know, that's, that's the main thing, just pushing that model and, and bringing everybody else with you. Zach Chan, you're right, and Zach. Right, right. How do you, um, you know, we speak to the, uh, to the depth of running back. Um, how do you see your, you guys like blending in uh, together, like whether that's like two personnel uh, sets, um, and then as well as, um, do you see uh, like a lot of uh, your receiving skills being used? Oh, definitely. Um, you see that throughout the whole um, spring ball, well. but I, I think. What you, what you mentioned, too, is how we can be able to go one punch, one punch, one punch, one punch, all the way down the field. Um, I think it's a variety of different things in the offense that we can use, um, different plays. Coach Shanahan, he's a, a genius up there, um, just kind of like, you know, being able to dissect the defense, understand what it is to use and what it is not to use. Um, and I, I just am excited to be able to, to use our techniques when it comes to, you know, run the ball and, and be able to run routes out the backfield and really go in empty, whatever that may look like. Um, to, to be able to be um, very explosive. Um, the point is to really be explosive. We want to have an explosive offense, and um, I think that's that's our plan. So, there's Zach B. Second on your left, and last one to Joe. Hey, Justice. Uh, you spent 21 and 22 sharing a back for the Wake Forest with Christian Turner. I, I know he was here last year. I know the <coughs> coaching staff is different, but was there any interaction between you and him in this past offseason? Yeah, that's my boy. Um, we, we, I, I, I was a, it was a privilege to be able to you know be with him and. You know, kind of talk with him um, before I, you know, end up in here. And you know, he pretty much told me what it was, and it was cool to be able to relate to him that it is a different staff coming in. Um, it's a whole new new team, um, but he he also encouraged me. He told me the little spots to eat at in Bloomington, so that was a little cool to do. Um, but also, you know, being going to the unknown is very awkward for a lot of people. Um, and he just helped me with that process, just knowing like, hey man, like even though you were here for four years, man, this. This Bloomington is something special, and they really want to win here. So, you know, we connect on that level, and shoot, I still connect with them to this day. So, last one, Joe, second row on your left. In those two years, like you mentioned, you had Sam Hartman getting you the ball at quarterback, and then now entering this is your third straight year with a third different quarterback. So, <clears throat> yourself especially, how important is it to be adaptive to still be productive? 
Oh, that's, that's, you hit it right on the head, man. I mean, that's what it's really about, um, just connecting with the quarterback, um, kind of be able to be adjustable. Um, these games, a lot of these teams, especially on this level, um, they throw a lot of stuff at you um, from different looks and all different type of things. But it's important to bring that team chemistry with you and the quarterback. Um, me and Kurt, we really are building our bond together. Um, I look up to him, you know, I have my beautiful fiance, he has his beautiful wife now, so we kind of have our little relationship going on, just, just talking about things and things like that, and we're pretty much building that chemistry. Um, so, you know, I think it's going to be great because we're going to be able to adjust on the fly and be able to communicate with each other. Um, when you love somebody, you can be able to communicate with them to have them do what you need them to do in pressured moments, you know, when it's five seconds left and you bat, you know, Michigan, you know what I'm saying? So, I think it's, it's going to be good, we just got to work on adjusting and continue to build that team. Great. Thanks, Justice. Thank you. I appreciate Thank you. it. Thank you.